Ich filme ein ganzes bisschen an. Ja, meine Hand runter. More big eights racing. This is the Thames Cup for Club Men's Eights. Leander against Deutsche Ruder Club Hanover von Axtein Hundred Field with Axtein Deutschland. So it's GB, DE, off the blocks, big men's eights. You weren't wrong when you were talking about we're just being spoiled for eight sections this afternoon. It's coming thick and fast down this course. I mean, all different types of thrills and spills and different types of boats, but for me, the power of the eight is something really awesome, isn't it? And you can see, again, the crosswind causing a little bit of a problem for uh, for both crews uh, here. The German crew nearest to the camera, camera here in their red, white and blue um, shirts looking very punchy. Yeah, and although we talk about all the different tactics and styles of racing and rowing, and you know, I think when the big eights races come off the start, it's just get out, get fast, get ahead, and then settle. And, uh, and this, again, Looks like the crews might be starting to separate now from this angle. It's always hard to tell, but it's just dramatic start from both from everyone at the moment. So Leander Club are on the far side. They've probably got two to three seats of advantage at this stage over Duisburg. And Leander beat Agecroft and then beat City of Cambridge to get their place here into at this round, the quarterfinals of the Thames Challenge Cup for club crews, and at the moment they're moving away solidly, stroke by stroke, from Hanover. This is the bit, isn't it? We jump down the course and suddenly you think, wow, that's quite a dramatic move. But what we miss is a little bit of the footage that covers that part of the race, and what Leander have done very convincingly is actually created a big gap. Yeah, if you're watching this and you're not somebody who, who follows rowing much, then you might observe that the kind of number of strokes per minute, the number of times the oars are going in and out of the water, has just dropped a bit. And that's because the early start phase, you've got to get out of the blocks really quickly, get the boat moving from nothing to its maximum speed. But then you have to sustain it, and you can't sustain that kind of anaerobic level of power all the way down a six-plus minute race. So Hanover on the right, what are you seeing here, Catherine? This is pretty tall order for them now. Yeah, I mean, with the eight, it's always a really hard one. We've got that gap. Again, even, and it comes back to that rule of the cox. What are you saying to your crew right now? Because they won't be able to feel the opposition, particularly the Leander will have slipped away for them. But they still want to put in the best race they can down this course. So it's a lot of it's about pride. And about it's, A lot of people will be finishing their season on this race. So it's making sure they compete right to the end. So there's Leander on their home water. Their boathouse is right by Henley Bridge, which is just beyond the finish of this track. They're well over uh, two thirds of the way down through the course now, rowing nice and loose and calm. Stroke there by George Stadden and Cox by Sonia Gladstone. She'll just be telling those athletes to keep calm and loose and relax. They're now into conserving energy for the next round. Really important for Leander. So Leander beating Hanover down this track in the Thames Challenge Cup at Henley Royal Regatta. Well, a lot of work to do by the Germans. They're not giving up at all here. Lots and lots of hard work going down on through those legs, relentlessly determined to go through this. Well, that's it. I mean, for every crew coming here, whichever day you get to, to qualify for this regatta is a big, big deal. So you will want to put everything into every race you've got. And even this is the, going to be a tough ask for Hanover now to, to make any impact on that Leander lead. But they'll still want to finish with the best race they've got in them for today. Really tricky conditions. You can see how the boat's bouncing around there. We've got some launch washes coming, which makes it hard. The, the water's hard, and then they're also actually in the wake. You can't see it so much, but the wake, the sort of V-shape you get off the Leander boat will be um, cutting across them as well now at that distance. Whereas Leander, well, they've got clear water ahead of them. They've probably got 150 metres still to go. There's the relaxation. There's nothing quite like the feeling of a race that you're pretty much certain to win at this point for the end. I know. Enjoy in, the moment. In right? these conditions, I mean, the Nanda boat's still bouncing around in the water, but they're relaxed, they're enjoying it, they know they're on to tomorrow. That, that wash, that, that wind is going to be a lot more stressful for the Hanover crew, which is still going to battle it right to the end. So Leander Club on their home stretch, passing the stewards enclosure, you might be able to pick out a few pink jackets and pink socks, the distinctive pink of the Leander Club crew, and their oars many times seen first across this line at Henley. They book their spot to the tomorrow's semi-finals in the Thames Challenge Cup. And uh, no shame for the hard-working men of Deutsche Rüder Club Hannover von Axel 100 Vietnam, Axel from Germany. Second place, but no shame getting through to this stage of the competition. Such a hard-fought competition in the Thames Cup. Thames Cup, Leander beating Hannover.